Hi there, it's Ms. Novakowski coming to you from the studio at Grower Elementary in the Richmond School District. And the project I'm going to share with you today is called a pull-up polyhedra, and it uses ideas both from mathematics and engineering in its design. So for this project, you need some cardstock, a bit heavier paper, um, a hole punch, some scissors, and some string. And this is an example of a pull-up polyhedra. This is going to make a cube. And you start with a net, a two-dimensional net made up of squares. And then you pull it. Let's see if I can get it to pull it together in the air here. You pull it together, if I hold that base, and it comes together to form a cube or a three-dimensional shape. Okay, so to begin to make our pull-up polyhedra, we need a square piece of paper. And this is a little bit thicker paper than regular paper. It's called cardstock. It has a little bit of a thicker weight and that'll make this uh, pull up a little bit easier, keep the structure. You do need a square. So you can either use a ruler and measure equal sides and cut your paper, or you can use that trick that I've shown you before for our origami projects is if you take a rectangle piece of paper and you fold up one corner along the edge here and then cut along here then you will have a square okay so you need to start with a square for this project okay so we want to make sure when we're doing any of our folds we're going to fold both ways in and then out again to create that flexibility with our paper so I'm going to start by taking my square and folding it in half to make two rectangles here. So we're not going to do any diagonal folds. It's all going to be across vertically or horizontally. Okay? And then I'm going to fold it the other way. So again, this is just creating this flexible paper here for our structure. Now I'm going to fold in the right side into that center line. And again, if you find that the lines, fold lines hard to see, you can always use a ruler and go over them with a pencil. So I'm creasing this with my finger and then I'm also going to go back and do it the other way so that that's nice and flexible. Back and forth. Okay. And then I'm gonna do this side into the center as well. So now I have folded my paper into fourths or quarters into four equal parts back and forth. There we go. So four parts. One, two, three, four. Now I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. So now I have my folds going across horizontally and now I'm going to fold it in half again. So creating a center line, a vertical center line again. Now if I open it up, I will have eights or eight parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Again, I'm going to go back and forth on that center line so the paper is really flexible. And I'm going to do the same fold again. I'm going to fold in from this side into the center line. And again, the thicker paper is a little bit harder to fold. So just be patient and take your time. But it will help the structure of the polyhedron afterwards. And again, reverse, go across that fold back and forth a couple of times and then my last fold in. So I will now have, can you visualize how many squares you'll have? You will have a four by four array. So you will have four times four which is 16 squares. Again reverse. You can see here we've got four rows of four, four columns of four, so four, eight, 12, 16 squares. So the polyhedra we're making is a cube, so it has square faces. And this is why these are squares here. And so it has one, two, three, four, five, six faces that come together. Can you visualize that, how they can fold up to form a cube? So we only need six of these 16 squares. So on this side, I've shown you here the shape that we're going to use, three across this way, 
one, two, three, and then four, five, six, making like a T or a cross. And then we're gonna cut out all these extra squares here that we're not going to use for this project. Okay, so I'm gonna use the fold lines and I'm gonna cut carefully along the fold lines here. I can cut out these four, just go right across here. So we're not gonna use those. You could save those for another project. And then these two up here. Again, just follow your fold lines. Again, if you want to use your ruler and pencil to draw along those to get straight lines, you can do that. I have this extra little square up here. And now I have three extra ones here. I'm just gonna cut off these two here. Trying to do the smallest number of cuts as I can, or smallest number of turns, I guess. There we go, and our last little square here. Don't need those, and I can take off these. These were just to sort of mark my spots. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, and I've got our structure or our net ready, oh, and some of my hair, our net ready to make our polyhedra. Okay, the next phase is we're gonna be punching holes in some of the corners and then putting our string through them to pull up this two-dimensional net into a three-dimensional shape. Can you see that there? That's making a cube. So you don't have to do this, but I find if you put a little bit of tape um, at the corners where you're gonna punch, then the, the paper won't tear. So that might be an extra step that you would like to do. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of tape at each corner, so the two top corners. I'm gonna wrap it around the back so it's on both sides so that when I punch a hole through there, it's just extra secure and won't tear. You can use masking tape or clear tape, whatever you have. Or if you wanna just add an extra layer of, pa of paper, you could just, um, you could also just glue a little bit of paper on those corners as well. Okay, so I've got two top corners, two bottom corners. And then the other place you're gonna add them is not to both corners here, it's just to the top. So where you have the one square up here, you're also going to add it to the top there on each side. So you have six, six places and six squares, but six places where we're going to add our hole. Okay, our next step is to punch our holes, and I've got a hole punch here. This special tool just for this project. And I can line this up here in the center and punch my hole. I don't want it too close to the edges because then it's more likely to tear. six holes in these six corners and then we're ready to string it up so you can cut your string you need a little bit more than a meter so measure that out and again to help thread it through the holes I just used a little bit of the tape that I used for the holes and wrapped it around the, the top part of the string so it doesn't start to unravel you could also use yarn or wool or ribbon a really thin ribbon if that's what you have at home Okay, now we're going to string this, and I'm going to use some inside-outside language. The inside are the going through the holes from where the inside of the cube will be, and the, when I say outside, it means the outside of where the cube will be. So we're going to start with the bottom right corner and start on the inside and pull through there. Okay. And again, we can trim that afterwards. I'm just going to pull that through. And then because we started on the inside and then out, now we're gonna do from the outside and in, from this top right here on the cross. And then we're gonna go in and out because these two corners need to pull together, just like that. Okay. And again, I pull this through. 
And then we're on the out, so we go through the outside to the in here. And then this next adjacent one here, inside and pull out. And you can see how this is starting to come together here to pull our cube, whoops, our cube into place. Okay, and then the final one here. Outside in and then and the outside and then back in here. Okay, so we've got our string and again, I'm gonna trim it. So you only need them a little like this long. So I'm gonna trim this extra bit off here. And then I'm gonna show you how you can pull this up to form our polyhedra. Okay, so you need to secure the bottom square of your net either to the table. So I've just taped it in here, just on the three sides. And so that that part, that square is secure on the table. Or you could glue that bottom square onto a, a heavier piece of cardboard um, and just use a glue stick or tape and you could do it that way. But I'm just gonna show you this way here because we already had the tape out. So again, I've got my two strings now. And as I start to pull them towards me, you can see how the net is starting to pull up and fold on itself. I keep pulling, 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 pulling. And there's my cube. And one more time. So I've got my two strings here and I'm just gonna pull them towards me slowly. And I'm watching the six faces of the cube or the polyhedra folding in on each other. And the six faces coming together to form the cube. So maybe you can use some of your extra squares that we cut out, because you'll have 10 extra squares, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, oh, nine extra squares. Oh, no, nope, I've got one more here, 10. And these are congruent. They're all the same size and shape. Congruent means the same. And you could think about how maybe you could tape them together to form a cube in a different way. And now that you know how to make this puddle up, polyhedra, maybe you could think about how to make a prism or a pyramid using the same ideas.